Hey guys, welcome to Everything Defensive Carry. In our last video, we talked about pocket pistols. And in the demonstration, we showed that fire from a pocket, uh, the pocket pistol can be fired uh, some second compared to appendix carry or strong side carry with a full size gun. So what I'd like to do today is build on that a little bit. Um, and let's talk about why we would choose a pocket gun um, and why we would want to use that over a full-size gun. Now there are many considerations and everybody's different. Uh, everybody has different needs in their daily lives. Uh, not everybody wants to tote around a full-size pistol, but people still want to have some protection. So what we are talking about here in reality is a philosophy of use. Now philosophy of use is dependent upon the individual. There is not one person who can dictate to you or dictate to me what our needs on an everyday basis are. So with that said, we have to determine, first of all, what, our, what is a philosophy of use. A philosophy of use is basically just what your need is for that gun and what its intended purpose or role that it is to fill for you in your daily life, okay? Not everybody, once again, wants to carry around a full-size handgun. Um, I demonstrated in the last video that I can carry around two, uh, two large guns, uh, three guns, concealed. That's not a feat. The thing is, not everybody wants to do that. So it's not necessarily what you can do and get away with, it's what do you want to tolerate. And it is a highly individual, personal decision. So with that said, once we've determined that the pocket gun meets our philosophy of use, let's talk about one of the strengths of the pocket pistol over all the other guns, and that would be the floating gun concept. Now I'm not sure who came up with that name. I've been using that name for a number of years, the floating gun concept. So let me explain what that is. The idea of a floating gun is a gun that you carry on you that you can readily move from place to place to meet the changing environment that you find yourself in. So let me give you a demonstration. You know, we're walking through a parking lot. Now, if you, if you study statistics, if you study crime statistics, keep up with things like that, you'll find that many times when people are accosted or they're their attack is in a parking lot type scenario walking through to or from your car. That's when you're probably most vulnerable. So when we're pocket carrying, we can actually uh, have our hand on the gun, okay, as we're walking. But as we are getting into the car, we have sometimes, you know, we have to use a key to get to the car for those who don't have remotes. Uh, your back's turned. You're generally at your most vulnerable when you are distracted from being able to look around you, okay? The strength of a pocket gun is you can actually palm it. You can take it out of your pocket, in the holster, okay? And have it in your hand as you're walking to your car. Now as you can see, I've got the gun down here to my side. There's very little showing. Uh, at nighttime, nobody would even see this. But yet, the gun is in my hand, it's ready to go. You cannot get any faster into action than that. Another thing about the floating gun concept is we can move this. Oh, and the, the pistol is unloaded. Uh, but another thing about the gun is we can move it from place to place as our environment changes. For instance, once you get in your car, you open up your door, you're sitting, in, you're sitting down in your seat, you can take the pistol and move it under your leg. So that as you drive, you have access to it. You can place it in your console, wherever in the car you want to put it. You can do this in a restaurant. You can do this in a movie theater. Uh, you, can, you can move it to go around wherever you need it to be at that time. So let's not discount the, uh, the pocket pistol. Uh, the, the pocket gun is often considered the secondary gun, the uh, bug, backup gun okay, as it's called. But I think that we're doing the gun a disservice and the, the idea behind it. I think we're doing it a disservice and we're actually limiting ourselves by doing that because many times, if this gun is in my pocket, even if I'm carrying a second gun, I have my hand on the gun as I'm walking around. As we demonstrated in the video, this is perfectly normal. 
Okay, so if I need something to defend my life with, my hand's already on the gun. This gun goes from a backup gun, a secondary gun, to a primary gun at that time. Because it's the first gun, the first firearm that I will introduce into the fight to defend my life. So therefore, it's not really a bug anymore, is it? It's a primary gun. So I think we need to kind of uh, uh, think about this a little bit uh, and change our way of thinking or allow ourselves to think a little bit differently about our personal defense uh, requirements and needs. Uh, I have an anecdote on uh, that very topic. I had a friend who was a state trooper. Uh, we worked together for a long time. He decided to go to state police. He's with the state police a very short time. He's in an altercation after a traffic stop uh, way out in the, in the country, a uh, desolated area. During the altercation, he loses his 10 millimeter. I don't, I can't remember what the guy that he was uh, wrestling with got it uh, from him out of the holster if it was dropped. But anyway, uh, my friend lost control of his primary gun. And luckily he was carrying a backup, uh, his uh, Walther PPK, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he was able to stop uh, the, uh, the suspect from using his 10 millimeter on him, on him uh, with his uh, backup gun. So at that point in time, we can say safely say that uh, that his PPK was not a backup weapon, was it? So let's think about this, guys. As we uh, as I conclude this, I don't want to keep it long. Uh, please uh, like and share the video if it uh, if you find the information helpful. Keep in mind this information is for people who. Uh, are starting out caring, uh, but uh, you know, give it a like, give it a share, and make sure and subscribe. The next video that I'm going to do is on a highly debated subject: uh, point threat shooting versus front sight press. There's a lot of misinformation out there about that uh, for various reasons, and I'm going to sh do a demonstration and share my opinion on that subject for you. Uh, and uh, so anyway, tune in, don't miss that one. Uh, and I thank you for watching this video uh, and please uh, subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a good day.